Now let's see what happens when we evaluate lambda expressions. Lambda expressions result in procedural objects. So we, whenever we evaluate a lambda expression, we get a procedure. These are depicted uh, in the diagram as two uh, circles. As you see, we have two circles there, and that's that corresponds to uh, a procedure. Why it is two circles and not one will be clear soon. We define another, or we we evaluate another lambda expression, and as you see, we get uh, two more circles. So on the left we have two lambda expressions. All right, not three, two. two we have two lambda expressions, and evaluation of those two lead to two procedural objects. Because we like to show more detail about these procedures, we uh, show them outside the frame in which they exist, like so. So we make sure that these two circles, one of them shows the textual structure of the lambda expression, and the second circle points as a pointer, as kind of address to the environment in which the uh, procedural object exists in. As you see, the procedure to the right has a body which in itself is a lambda expression. But that's for the time, that for the time being is just text, so that wouldn't create any procedures. However, when that body is executed, then we get a procedure, but we are not there yet. And just like um, names that are bound to numbers, we could have names that are bound to procedures, like the first procedure we defined earlier, we can give it a name G, okay? And that's how it's shown, a pointer from G to the procedural object. And that's binding, just like binding of a name to a number. Now we define another name twice, which is bound to the other procedure we just defined in a similar manner. And as you know, to the left we have two alternative ways of writing the same thing. In both cases, in both in both cases, twice is defined as a procedure that, uh, upon application, will uh, result into another procedure, it will return a procedure <coughs> when evaluated. Uh, just to show a bit more detail like how this thing happens, so we are trying to assume that we have uh, uh, we are in a point where we want to evaluate the uh, expression to the left that is defined twice as a procedure. What happens? Well, uh, first of all, define has to evaluate the value to which the, the name is going to be bound to. So the lambda expression has to be evaluated. And once that is, uh, that is evaluated, we get the procedure to the right. Okay, now we have the procedure. The next thing is to make sure that the procedure knows where it was created. And that's where we create the connection between the procedure and the current environment. And finally, we uh, give that thing a name, like so. So that's what lambda expressions and define and set do. Um, let's discuss the general case of um, Lisp expressions or scheme expressions. They look like that. Parentheses and then some sort of operation and some arguments. What we do in these general cases is that we first have to know whether we have the right things in the, in the right place. 
So what we do is we evaluate the uh, the uh, element named op here. As yet, we don't know what it is. It's just an, it's just something uh, that has to be evaluated. We don't know what we get when we evaluate it. And then we evaluate R1, R2, and so on, until Rn. Finally, when we know all this, then we um, apply, or we attempt to apply up to Rx. There will be two cases. Up could be uh, procedural objects which is built in, like multiplication and uh, division or whatever. In that case, the uh, application is uh, trivial and uh, it is not depicted in the diagram. The other case is where we realize that op is uh, a procedural object that the user defined. In that case, we do some other uh, stuff which is actually de de uh, depicted in the environment diagram. So uh, let's let's see what happens when we have such an expression. We assume we have this simple compound expression consisting of g and five, and we want to evaluate it in this particular state of affairs that you see in this particular environment diagram. So how does uh, how do we do this? First, we evaluate g, and then we evaluate five. Evaluation of G gives us this procedure to the left. Evaluation of 5 gives us the number 5. At this point, we know what G is and what the value of 5 is. We see that G is a procedure, so we go further. What happens now is the following. that uh, We see that G has a parameter X and then a body consisting of uh, multiplication of X by 2. So uh, we need to bind that uh, x to the uh, argument we got. Okay, so a new frame is resulted at that point, and uh, this is uh, because we need to evaluate the body of the procedure in an environment in which the parameter of the procedure has a meaning, okay? Otherwise, uh, it will be uh, uh, illogical and uh, we'll have references to names that do not exist. So, in order to make sure that everything is done correctly, this uh, um, frame is created, and what this frame can what this frame contains depends on the parameters of the procedure being applied, which is the procedure G, and then we connect this to the same place that the procedure is connected to. In that way, we know that the other names, or the other stuff that is used in the body of the procedure is also defined. And then we make sure that this newly created frame becomes the beginning of the new environment in which the body of the uh, procedure, the body of G in this case, is computed. So at this point we evaluate times x2. Um, since we are pointing at this frame, uh, again the same thing happens. So um, we are trying to multiply x by 2, but the system doesn't know that. The system sees um, three things. This is an expression that contains three things. Um, mul this multiplication asterisk sign, and then x, and then 2. Uh, both the asterisk and the x are names, so they are looked up. Uh, we find the uh, procedural objects for multiplication, which is built into the scheme uh, by looking up asterisk, and then uh, we look up x, we find uh, the value 5, in the first frame, we are very lucky, um, and as before we apply 
the operation to its arguments. So we know which operation it is now. It, the operation is multiplication, and we know the values. The values are 5 and 2. And that happens in some sort of magic, and then we get the value 10, which is not shown in this diagram, but will be shown on your screen when you run scheme. So the next thing is that uh, uh, the current environment, well, the, the, the procedure body completes, and we don't need this environment we created a minute ago. So the current environment becomes what it was before. And this other thing with x5 just hangs there and doing nothing in, uh, in principle. So this is how things look like after evaluation of g5 has completed. Let's evaluate uh, uh, this other expression too. This is uh, an expression containing two things, twice and g. Um, they are both names, so we look them up in the current environment and we see that both twice and g are procedures. Okay, So we know what they are. Uh, twice appears in the particular position in which procedures appear, so and it is, it is in fact a procedure, so we, everything is okay. So what we do is to apply twice to g. When we want to apply a procedure to an argument, then a new uh, frame is created. In the new frame, we bind the argument of the procedure being applied, in this case twice, twice has the argument f. We connect that to its argument. The argument is G, which happens to be a procedural object. Okay. Once the frame is created, we connect that frame to the same frame as the procedure, as the procedure twice. The procedure twice is pointing out this big box up here as its environment. So we connect this new frame to that box, and uh, consequently we have a new environment in which the body of the procedure twice is evaluated. How does that body look like? Well, it looks like lambda x f f x. Okay, so it's a lambda expression. The body of this procedure is a lambda expression. And when lambda expression is evaluated in a particular environment, we get a procedural object. Just like before. So that's what we get. And then uh, evaluation of twice g is complete. So we restore the current environment to the position it was pointing previously. And that's the result of evaluating twice g. It's a procedure. We may choose to give that procedure a name, and we may not. So if we want to give it a name, we say define uh, um, foo as twice g and then the name of this we get a new binding in the global environment called foo and then foo will be bound to this procedure will be bound to this procedure but in this case we didn't choose a name for it so it will be just hanging there until somebody removes it from there uh, thank you uh, there will be a couple of more uh, examples um, in future videos about environment diagrams.